Happy Easter. If you are Christian or if you speak to Christians today, they may say, Hallelujah, he has risen. Easter, the day when the stone was rolled back to reveal that the tomb was empty, that the crucified Jesus who had suffered, who had been killed, could in fact not be killed. The women found out he was alive. He was still walking around with them. Cause for great celebration. Now, whether or not you literally believe that there was a person who was crucified and his body couldn't be killed, it's an amazing story, isn't it? Here is this healer, teacher, beloved rabble rouser who gets into trouble with the criminal justice system. A person of color in an untraditional family, poor, homeless, and like so many, he is condemned. He is seen as somebody who would be better off dead. We're told that his life doesn't matter with so many others who were crucified at that time, who were put to death, who were seen as worthless. But this one, the story goes, didn't die. This one, when the tomb was rolled away, wasn't there. When I heard that story as a child, it didn't really make a lot of sense to me and I didn't really care a lot about it one way or the other. It seemed like a lot of stories, kind of magical, but it didn't seem to have much to do with me. I wasn't raised Christian. It didn't bring cause for celebration. For me, it truly wasn't until I spent time in a poor, struggling, primarily people of color community in Roxbury, Massachusetts, that I came to understand this story. Because this story is not about one guy who doesn't get killed. This story is about the community that still has reason for hope. This community that is poor, this community that has given up what they had, this bereft community who think that they are lost, find that in fact, there is life. There is reason for hope. When I spent a year as an intern years ago in Roxbury, Massachusetts, among a community of addicts, of people in recovery, of homeless people, jobless people, so many people who had been incarcerated that it was part of how we talked to each other. What was your spiritual journey while you were in jail? It was only there that I came to understand what this story of resurrection really meant because this story wasn't written for privileged people. This story was written for the ones who felt hopeless, the ones who had been told they were hopeless, that their lives didn't matter. They're the ones who said, this resurrection is about us. Our community is alive. Hope is to be found living in our community. And no matter what is done to us, it can't be taken from us. No one can kill that spirit. It's an amazing thing to find that kind of hope in a place which objectively could decide to be hopeless and to see how much generosity and care and love come into the community from that hope, whether you call that the living Christ or whether you call that beloved community. I tend more to call it beloved community, that spirit that spirit of freedom and justice that nobody can kill. When we look around the world at all of the movements for social justice and the amount of suffering and the large machine of state and corporation that tries to crush people over and over, and yet the spirit can't be crushed. The spirit can't be killed. You can break our bodies but our spirits still yet live. That's the resurrection story. 
Years ago, I read the Buddhist monk Thich Nhat Hanh suggesting that perhaps if the Buddha is to be reborn, it will not be as one enlightened person. Instead, it will be in community, that a community will hold that enlightenment that is the Buddha. And similarly, I believe that it's the living community that holds or that doesn't hold the life of Christ. Christ, you know, isn't Jesus's last name. Christ is about being Jesus the Christ, the living God. Unitarian Universalists believe that there wasn't just one child of God, that we are all children of God, and that Jesus wasn't God separate from us. Jesus was fully human. With that belief, we are called to create resurrections in our lives. We are called to find hope, when hope is hard to find, and to share that hope, to give that away, to offer that up. That is the hope of Easter. That is the hope that can't be killed. Some people would rather simply tell Easter as a story about daffodils and rabbits and chicks and all of those fertility symbols from the pagan traditions are certainly part of the holiday, the spring equinox part of the holiday. But I think there is something uniquely precious about this story of a fighter for justice who could not be killed. Like so many who are tied up with the criminal justice system, like so many who are told your life doesn't matter, this story says it is right there that we are to find what is holy. It is right there in that moment of brokenness that we can find the hope that won't die. May this Easter season for you be a time of finding that hope buried deep in the cave, the parts of yourself and the parts of the world that you feel are so broken, they'll never live. May you find them now and bring them out and allow yourself to be resurrection. and allow yourself to be resurrected and to practice resurrection in this community and in the whole world that you inhabit. May you know that you can't kill the spirit. It's like a mountain. It's like a river. It's like the sky. It can't be killed. And may you know that you too are part of this. We are all part of this. Let us together be resurrection.